Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman, here with some more. Uh, uh, we're doing regions of different places. What's this, what is this uh, series I'm doing again called? Uh, Administrative Divisions Explained. Uh, so, yeah, just uh, South America. And now we're on to Germany. Uh, I did Germany, uh, the regular geography now on Ger Germany. And it's actually one of my more popular videos. So that's pretty awesome. So apparently uh, a lot of people love Germany or are interested about Germany or a lot of people are from Germany and, you know, like to see what outsiders think of their country. So uh, one of the two, maybe both. I don't know. But uh, yes, uh, Germany, definitely very interesting country. Definitely uh, uh, very cool, uh, very interesting uh, history. You know, it goes very far back. You know, I do I do a lot of uh, war videos. You know, uh, like you know, like the Thirty Years' War and Roman times, all all the all that stuff. You know, so uh, ger like Germanic tribes and stuff like that. So, right, that's from this Germany area, right? Germanic, right? Makes sense. But anyway, <laughs> but anyways, guys. Uh, uh, this is gonna be a states, uh, but is lander, but is lander. Uh, I'm sorry, it's, it's just sitting there saying that, so I try to pronounce it, and I know I, I, I know I butchered it, but anyways, I tried, right? Uh, that's all it counts. Germany explained, so I guess we're going just like uh, when I did like Australia and South America and whatever, you know, it kind of. And go to the different regions and see the differences uh, across the country, pretty much, right? That's kind of the idea. Um, but, okay, like a more in depth look at like the countryside and all that fun stuff, right? Uh, uh, a little different from the Action Jar Free Now, you know, the original episode, you know, a little different. So, anyways, guys, please hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't yet. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, it definitely brings more viewers helps bring more viewers and then it's like if you're from here it definitely puts a more bigger of a spotlight on this kind of content so you know that it helps everyone right i know that, that's my sales pitch anyway but <laughs> yeah like and subscribe and i'll jump into this i hope you guys are having an amazing day that uh three two Hey everybody, so as you know, we are working on the scripts for the next few country episodes, which means this is going to have to be a filler week. Heavily, heavily, heavily requested. This one is going to be on the states or Bundesländer of Germany. Germany is a powerhouse nation. Obviously, it is the largest economy in Europe, and it holds a significant role of geopolitical activity that links an entire continent. As you'll soon find out, each state in Germany is pretty... Yeah, Germany's like right there in the middle. They got everybody around them. It's like kind of like, kind of like the center of Europe, right? Pretty much what they're saying now. Now I'm gonna get like countries around them. Are like, no, we're the center of Europe. Blah blah blah. Sorry. Anyways, yeah. Pretty unique and diverse in their own way. They each kind of have their own specialty, and some have unique dialects. Before we get into this, though, I just want to let you know that one of my favorite sponsors is working with us once again, Satera. For those of you that don't know, Satera is a geography game website. Yeah, pretty appropriate for this channel, don't you think? You can download it on iOS or Android, or you can just go to the website here and play it online. You can choose your own. Thank you, Satera, for sponsoring Geography Now. All right, and so with that being said, let's just jump into the 16 Bundesländer of Germany. First one, Baden-Württemberg, okay. capital Stuttgart. This is like the other southern state besides Bavaria. It was formed by the joining of three other former states. These, kind of like the luxury car state. You know, they have the headquarters of Mercedes-Benz and Porsche. Lots of manufacturing going down here. It's very busy. They're all the Autobahn, I guess. is that what that roads called and you can go as fast as you want and is that this state oh i guess i should let him finish right just uh yeah there's a mercedes-benz and porsche lots of manufacturing going down here cool. it's very busy they're also known for having the black forest where all those fairy tales were inspired off of okay. by the brothers Grimm, which also plays into the unique swabian culture that they're known for down here swabians have possibly the weirdest dialect in all of germany a lot of germans can't even understand them and it incorporates a lot of weird unique festivals a lot of times they wear Scary. these costumes based off of the fairy tales that came from here switzerland huh. is like their best friend they really 
really just kind of get each other. A lot of Swiss people come over and travel to this area of Germany, and they're known for being really smart with their money and handling it very well, which also kind of means a lot of people think they're kind of stingy. That's like the stereotype. Geography Jessica says, it is a sacrilege to throw stuff out, even if it's a broken TV or something. Bavaria or Bayern, capital okay. Munich. This is the largest state in so do you guys there, you guys have like yard sales, you know, where you have the yard sales, garage sales, you know, where you just kind of sell the stuff you don't use anymore, you know, you guys do that over there since you don't like, you know, like throwing stuff away, you know, just try and find like a new home for it, you know, kind of thing. Anyways. V or something. Bavaria or Bayern, capital Munich. This is the largest state in size and the second largest in terms of population. It's kind of like the home of all those, you know, perpetuated German stereotypes that became famous through American culture. You know, Lederhosen, yeah. Dirndls, those big one liter jugs of beer, half timber houses, you know, stuff like that. Reason being because after World War II, this place was occupied by the Americans and whatever they saw, they just kind of put in media. They're kind of like the most independent oh. out of all the German states. I mean, they I was wondering kind of how that, okay, it makes sense now, okay. I was kind of wondering how that was what, you know, was taken from putting in movies, okay, okay. It, it explains it now, okay, it makes sense. Whatever they saw, they just kind of put in media. They're kind of like the most independent out of all the German states. I mean, they even had their own king at one point. He went crazy and drowned himself. They have more of like a Catholic background. And Austria is kind of like their conjoined twin. Like they get they get along really well with Austria. Beautiful mountains here. In fact, the tallest mountain in all of Germany, Zugspitze, is found here as well. And no shocker, they are really, really, really known for beer. There's like over 4,000 breweries wow. here. The oldest one in all of Germany is also found here. And you know, all Germans kind of have their own opinions on Bavaria. Otto von Bismarck even once said, the Bavarian is the link between human and Austrian. Berlin, also the capital of Germany, is not only the largest city in Germany, but it's also one of the three city-states, as in cities that are considered states. Now, when I asked a lot of you German geography peeps to describe Berlin, a lot of you, even from Berlin, kind of said something along the lines of, Ugh, why do we even have this city? In 2003, <laughs> former mayor Klaus Wolverit described Berlin as, poor but sexy. It's pretty much the only capital city in all of Europe that costs more than it earns. As in, the entire country's GDP could be higher if Berlin didn't exist. And it's like you either love it or hate it. Geography Mara says, it's like the city where Germans go to find themselves. Starving artists, aspiring EDM and techno musicians trying to make a point while unemployed. No, but seriously, the city does have some cool sites, colorful art scene. What's weird though is, you can still kind of see the distinction between East and West Berlin because it yes I remember that when I did the Germany I definitely remember that and a lot of you guys commented on that video so I really appreciate but yeah I do remember them talking about the different lights because of the Berlin you know the Berlin Wall you know because they did you know, the Soviets had control and then the, you know the newer lights anyways yeah you have to check that video but yes definitely remember that but yeah uh, I guess Berlin makes uh, basically cost the country money that's kind of it seems kind of crazy you think like cities is what you know brings all the business in and you know that's where like the, the money comes from but wow that's interesting berlin do a lot of people from uh germany i didn't ask this question before like the berlin wall i'm sure there's a lot of like remnants and pieces of it when i got broke down do a lot of people in that area kind of like hold on to like that as a like the Berlin Wall as a, I don't know, keepsake or something, just curious. It was split after the war, and it's kind of like a weird place where capitalism and communism coalesce in one location. Yeah. I mean, I guess Berlin is kind of like the rebel punk rock teenager who locks himself in his room because his parents just don't understand him. Brandenburg, capital Potsdam. Geography Jakob says, people joke that this state is the dead zone that surrounds Berlin. Berlin has more what? people than the entire state of Brandenburg. This is the first of the five states that make the former East Germany before the unification. It's kind of known as like the slow to get things done state, as in their airport was always supposed to be done this year, but they always say that like every year and it's been like 10 years. Oh, uh, let's see, lots of former Prussian history here. Lots of- Considering there's like probably a two or three year difference between this video and now, uh, is the airport done yet? <laughs> Might as well ask, right? It's, it's been 10 years and now it'll be another three years, but like 13 years, I guess, kind of, I don't know. Let me know.
say that like every year and it's been like 10 years. Uh, let's see, lots of former Prussian history here. Lots of cool stuff to see here though, like the Roman baths or the Cottbus castle, the Anderhavel city museum. They actually have like cool. these cool medieval walls from the 14th century. One of the most notable sites being the palace of San Chusi. Lots right. of Eastern Europeans live here, especially Polish. I mean, they are on the border with Poland. They're kind of like the sidekick of Berlin that like tags along and wants to join his punk rock band, I guess you could say. Bremen. This is actually another city state. However, it's more of like two. It's broken up into Bremen and Bremerhaven. This is the smallest and least populated state in all of Germany at only about 660,000 people. Back in the day, it was labeled as a free Hanseatic city back when the Hanseatic League was a thing. That's a whole other thing we could talk about. Lots of <laughs> marine culture here. Actually, people who want to become sailors come to Bremen and Bremerhaven. Beck's beer comes from here as well as oh. chocolate beer, both of which many Germans hate. Let's see what else do they have. They have the Bremer. I've never had chocolate beer before. I've had Beck beer. It's been a while. But uh, chocolate, I don't, that just sounds nasty. So if you guys if you guys don't like it and you guys make it, it can't be that good, right? Uh, I don't know. I would, I would definitely try it. You know, I'll try anything once. But that doesn't seem very appetizing. As well as chocolate beer, both of which many Germans hate. Let's see what else do they have. They have the Bremer Stadt Music Kanten statue. They have the only microgravity tower in Europe where you can experience nine seconds of weightlessness, eight mummified bodies in glass coffins, and a memorial block in the street dedicated to a female serial killer. Charming. But yeah, you know, Bremen is just kind of like this unique... A memorial for a, a serial killer? I like to hear the story behind that one because usually, you know, if somebody does something really bad, you know, they don't try and honor them. They just kind of try and wipe them out and forget about them, you know. Uh, so maybe there was some kind of good to this. Maybe who, the serial killer was like Dexter, you know, just killing the bad people. Maybe that's it. Uh, maybe someone can inform me in the comments why, uh, you know, because that's interesting how you would honor a serial killer. I don't know quaint yet always kind of competing with Hamburg state which brings us to Hamburg. Hamburg is the last of the three city states and it is pretty much the richest state in all of Germany. <laughs> you gotta love these guys because people from Hamburg are called Hamburgers. Sometimes they're called the <laughs> Venice of the North Sea because they have all these neighborhoods that are separated by canals and cool. bridges. Like Bremen and Bremerhaven they have a harbor. I guess that's why it's like the richest city like that'd be cool to live right there like you know your apartment or your condo or home is right there like is that all one place like the middle part right there or is that probably a whole bunch of rooms you know, but like that's got to be expensive just having like a room for rent right there that'd be cool man just hanging on the bridge i don't know i can definitely see why it's expensive neighborhoods that are separated by canals and bridges. Like Bremen and Bremerhaven, they have a harbor built on the Elbe River, which gives them access to the sea, and they have a huge maritime culture, even though they are technically not on the sea. And they are getting quite a bit of attention these days because Hamburg is kind of like the IT capital of Germany right now. A lot of you have also mentioned that they have the most famous red light district in all of Germany, the adult-themed Reeperbahn. I did not know that. Lots of cool sites you can see here, though. Oh, and they love fish here. Kind of like the uh, tech okay rich guy who loves his fish. Next up, Hesse or Hessen, capital Wiesbaden. Much of today's Hesse state belonged to the former Hessen duchy back in the day. It was an independent state all the way up until 1871. And they are most famous for Frankfurt. It has more skyscrapers than any other city and it has the busiest airport in all of Germany as well. And it is kind of like the business so I guess they're like, uh, obviously, more skyscrapers. Like you think like Berlin, like, you know, the biggest city has no skyscrapers. So I guess Berlin is an older city, and so there's a lot of history there. So I guess I'm guessing that's why. And this is, must be a you know, much newer city, so it, it makes sense, right? Yeah, okay, never, never mind. Never mind. I don't know where I was going with that, but yeah. Business hub of Germany. It's home to so many corporate banks and financial institutions. Also home to the German Stock Exchange. Goethe, one of the most important writers in German history, is from Frankfurt. Well, they love apples, especially drinking it in various ways. They love apple cider. There's even a fountain that shoots apple wine at you. But yeah, Hess, Hessen is kind of like a... It's like the financial management brother of Hold the on. family. Lower Hold Saxony. On. Hold on. In various ways. They love apple cider. There's even a fountain that... Okay, it actually shoots at you. Like, okay, I thought there was like a, like, I don't know, it was like a fountain and it just kind of shot water back into the fountain, but it actually shoots. Well, that's, 
does anyone like tourists ever like put their head underneath there and try and taste it? Is that a thing? I can totally see that. And it's like Germans just like like well that must be another tourist, you know, just you know, just rolling their eyes like, you know. We definitely can spot the people that aren't from here. Shoots apple wine at you. But yeah, Hess, Hessen is kind of like a, it's like the financial management brother of the family. Lower Saxony, capital Hanover. It's the second largest state in terms of area and it's called Lower Saxony because of the elevation, not because of the geographic location on the map. Get Keep that in mind. This state right. gets along very well with the Netherlands. This state kind of has like two cultures, the Plain Saxons and the Frisians, whom are related to the Frisians in the Netherlands. It's kind of like the country farmland area of Germany. They host a lot of fairs like the World Fair Expo in 2000. However, interestingly enough, you can also hear quite a bit of Plattdeutsch spoken here as well, which is the dialect that the Amish speak in the Americas. It's also the headquarters of Volkswagen, and they also have Volksburg, which is the city with the highest GDP per capita in the entire country. It's like the richest city. Mecklenburg, okay. Vorpommern, capital Schwerin. This is actually the poorest state in Germany, and it is the second former East Germany state. As the name implies, Vorpommern, it was part of the former area known as Pomerania, which, yes, that's where the Pomeranian dog comes comes from. Some people joke that it should be called Mecklenburg for Poland because it has a lot of Polish influence. It's right next to Poland. They even share and split this island with them called Uzedom. It is very rural and sparsely populated. It has a lot of farmers and old people. In fact, it is disputably the oldest state in all of Germany. Tons of lakes here. I guess, uh, you know, I, is people just go retire out there, just retire and have a farm. Is that why there's so many old people there? I don't know. Or, um, Maybe back there's old people, you know, and they just want to kind of live the rest of their life in peace from the like, you know, from back in the war days kind of thing. You know, is that maybe that's it? I don't know. Just saying. <laughs> here, though, the largest lake completely within Germany is actually found here as well. They also have the largest island in all of Germany. Beautiful beaches, uh, cool places with like chalk cliffs. But yeah, Mecklenburg Vorpommern. It's kind of like uh, the old huh. angry grandpa that yells at the kids for running on his lawn. North Rhineland, West. Well, I like, I like some of the sites. Look pretty cool there, though. Just like a relaxing place. Uh, the old angry grandpa that yells at the kids for running on his lawn. North Rhineland, Westphalia. Capital, Dusseldorf. This is like the big daddy of Germany. It's the most populated with about 17 million. It's the powerhouse industrial capital of Germany. Much of its economy was built off of coal mining in the beginning. And today they have more companies and factories than anywhere else in Germany. People here have a deep-rooted Catholic culture. They love celebrating Carnival. The two biggest cities, Dusseldorf and Cologne, are always like competing with each other. There's really cool Frank Gehry architecture in Dusseldorf. Cologne has the Cologne Cathedral, obviously. And Cologne is kind of like the media capital of Germany. Much of the major studios can be found here. But yeah, overall, the this state is kind of like the cool. partying dad of Germany. Rhineland Palatinate, capital. I'm definitely going to ask in the end of this video, I'm going to ask now. Uh, if, which state would be the best one if you're going to visit? If like you're, someone's going to be driving through this state and you stop in there for a weekend, which state has the most to offer, you know, that somebody would like, I guess it would depend on the person, right? Depending on what you're looking for. I don't know, like maybe a, maybe a state where there's cool sites to see, but then there's also, you know, cool places to hang it. I don't know. I should ask that at the end of the video, but you know, ask that now while I remember, but yeah. Mains. This is kind of like the younger brother of Rhineland Westphalia, except they love wine. Like it's often argued that the best German wine can be found in this state. There's a lot of historical sites and castles, especially ones that date back to the days when France was always like invading and taking over. They also have the last bastion of Roman presence north of the Alps in the town of Trier. It's also the uh, birthplace of Karl Marx. They are known for liverwurst. It's kind of like the loyal sidekick of Rhineland Westphalia. Saarland, capital Saarbrücken. Besides the city-states, it is the smallest state in area. Basically, the people here are like Frenchy Germans. The area was occupied by France after World War II, and they were actually their own independent state all the way up until 1957 when they decided to go back to Germany, which explains why the people here are really good at speaking French. Jacques Fiona says they are like the long-lost uncle that you don't know how you're related to and speaks French. The most notable site, though, probably being the Focklingen Ironworks. It's a massive rusting steel plant that is now a UNESCO heritage 
Heritage site. Today it holds a museum, science center, and an auditorium for concerts. I wouldn't be surprised if heavy metal concerts were a big thing here. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> Saxony, <laughs> capital, Dresden. This is the third former East European state. Jacobi Thorsten explains it pretty well when he says, the Saxons are one of the oldest German tribes with having a lot of political influence in the early times of the Holy Roman Empire, and with some of them even creating something of what we now know today as England, hence why many British people say that they're Anglo-Saxon, and why the English- Okay, because I, I did an ancestor DNA test on this channel. Uh, I guess if you, if you wanted to watch it, you know, Canadian snowman ancestor DNA, I guess. And a, people, a couple of people in the comments said I was, I was an Anglo-Saxon. And it makes sense because on the test, it showed, you know, percentage German and then, you know, big percentage, you know, English and stuff. So, yeah, this definitely makes sense. I wasn't quite sure what the term Anglo-Saxon kind of meant. Uh, so this definitely makes sense now. Okay, it's cool. Awesome. Now know today as England, hence why many British people say that they're Anglo-Saxon and why the English language is classified as a Germanic language. It kind of started here. Interesting, right? Cool. This place cool. is kind of known for having two things, great universities and very right-wing politics. They get along really well with Czechia slash the Czech Republic, whatever you like calling it. They have a minority group called the Sorbians, a Slavic people group, kind of related to the Czechs, and it's actually a language that is protected by the German government. Nonetheless, though, I've been told that the people here are really super nice nice. They have like that East German hospitality. It's just, you know, they're different from the rest of Germany, especially Lower Saxony. Like the two Saxonies have nothing to do with each other. Saxony and Halt. Capital. So I guess maybe that's be one of those options if you're going to go visit Germany, go to the nice place. They might not have, might not have all the cool sites, but at least they might treat you good, right? I don't know. Lower, Lower Saxony, like the two Saxonies have nothing to do with each other. Saxony and Halt. Capital Magdeburg. This is the fourth former East German state. It's often said that they call themselves the state that wakes up earlier. This is basically kind of like Saxony's chiller little sister. It's also the birthplace of Martin Luther, who started the Protestant Reformation. Baroque composer Handel was born here. Uh, it is home to the Bauhaus movement, and they love Christmas here. They have a huge Christmas market and produce a lot of nutcrackers. When I was told they are home to the mountain of Brocken, which on April 30th becomes the site of the Walpurgisnacht, a night what? of dancing with witches based off of the story by Goethe. Schleswig-Holstein, capital Kiel. Hold on, you can't just like bring up the dancing with witches and just go on like, come on, okay. you got to expand on that description because I like weird stuff like that. So, uh, that's cool. Like, I want to go, like, dance with the witches. Is that, like, a big thing there? Or is he just kind of, like, you know, it's just a saying. Like, or is it, like, do people, like, dress up and kind of have this, like, little party or festival or something? I don't know. It seems, like, fun. It seems like a cool thing to do. I don't know. It's interesting, right? Named after the two duchies that worked together for centuries, it is the only bi-coastal state in Germany with coasts along the North Sea and the Baltic. And it's basically like the Denmark of Germany. There's a lot of Danish people here, Danish-speaking people here, and it's actually a protected, recognized language. Uh, you can greet people here by saying moin moin. And the cool thing is, on the North Sea coastline on the west side, they have the largest cohesive tidal flats in the world. A natural world heritage site, twice a day the tide recedes, exposing a massive mud flat. Of course, no surprise, Fishing and sailing are huge out here. They actually have a huge sailing competition every year. Yeah, the people here are kind of known for being like tall, animal herding people that are really quiet, like they don't talk much. And finally, okay. Thuringia or Thuringen, capital Erfurt, the last and final state of former East Germany. This place is probably most famous for the city of Weimar. As Jacob Thorsten says, it is the home of Johann Wolfgang Goethe and Friedrich von Schiller. Their works in the so-called Sturm and Drang era was so influential that it was manifested in a saying about Germany. Germany is the country of poets and thinkers. They were kind of like the Shakespeare's of Germany back in the day. Much of their writing actually influenced a lot of words and phrases for modern German that is spoken today. The composer Bach was born here. You can see his house. Oh. And interesting, they have a lot of caves here as well, like these. And uh, nice. they're known for having really good food here as well. They have like these potato dumpling things. And all Germans love Thuringian oh, style bratwurst. It's, uh, it's, it's, they're famous for it. So there you go. Those are the 16 states of Germany. However, a lot of you guys also mentioned- I don't think I ever had a bratwurst. Is that like a sausage? Are you guys gonna get mad at me for asking this, like what a bratwurst is? Like basically a sausage, right? No? 
let me know in the comments but then, anyway, either way that food looks really good yeah i want to i want to have some i'm hungry now but yeah those are the 16 states of Germany. However, a lot of you guys also mentioned two other things. The Spanish Balearic Island, Mallorca. A lot of Germans jokingly call this the 17th Bundesland. This is a hot spot for Germans and they flock to this place all year round. Tons of Germans already live here. A lot of the street signs and shop signs and billboards are written in German. People have lived on this island never learning a word of Spanish and they've been fine. Uh, yeah, the German Germans love this island. Uh, back in Cold War times, Cuba kind of like said, oh, we're gonna give you this island, Cayos Blanco del Sur, named Ernst Talmand Island. But then like Cuba was like, oh, it was just like a symbolic thing. We didn't actually give it to you. <laughs> and then Germany was like, eh, yeah, fine, whatever, keep that island. So that is it. So yeah, I mean, in conclusion, for Germany, you gotta hand it to them. They've gone through so much in the past century and it's almost miraculous how much they've moved forward. Whether you're Bavarian or mecklenburg vorpommern Hope you like this video. Thank you. Danke schön. Stay cool. Stay tuned. I guess that's just the getaway to get away from like mainland Germany and just go to the island and kind of kick back, relax, and chill out. You know, what happens on the island stays on the island, right? Uh, but yeah, anyways, uh, that definitely very interesting stuff. I get, like I've said before in these uh, states, it, it's definitely interesting to kind of see like the big differences like especially when you're on the east side of germany and the west side like you can depend on you, you could be speaking french i guess that kind of goes for where i'm from canada you know if you're you know if you're grew up on like the east coast area farther east you might a good chance you're gonna be speaking french you know so uh you know but except for this is kind of expanded more because you guys have you know many different influences by different countries surrounding you guys so that's that this is really cool to kind of you know see the differences between the states and you know how the influence from the outside countries kind of had on you or influence on the war or whatever i don't know but anyways definitely very interesting and cool uh let me know like i said yeah let me know uh which state is the best one i know there's going to be a lot of people choosing their own state but like you know why like, what's the best one to visit? Which one has the coolest stuff? You know, just go to Berlin, like, probably the best spot, you know, hot spot there. Or, or you no, know, is that just a typical thing? And, like, probably want to try at one of the more uh, well-known kind of places that has more to see. I don't know. Anyways, hit that like and subscribe. And I really hope you uh, uh, enjoyed this video. I'm going to continue along with more of these kind of videos until i'm done them all on geography now but anyways guys you guys have a great day great night and all that fun stuff and yeah like us like and subscribe and uh peace uh thank you guys for watching